Let me give you six reasons to choose a qualification with ACCA. You'll discover a world of opportunity. With 188,000 members and 480,000 students in 178 countries, you'll become part of a global network. You'll get a qualification that's recognized around the world. And you can tailor your studies for local law and tax to suit wherever you want to go. Employers trust ACCA. We have 110 years of experience, so employers trust us to deliver skilled professionals, which we do already to over 7,400 employers around the world. And we have ACCA Careers, giving you the career portal and the job board with thousands of vacancies waiting to be filled. Your automatic network. Once you become an ACCA member, you'll get access to thousands of finance professionals in our members' LinkedIn group, providing you with invaluable connections and potential mentoring opportunities. Or get involved through face-to-face -face networking events in your local area for students and members. And connect with fellow students through the virtual learning community. We're brilliantly flexible. Want to study full-time? Or fit your studies around work? No problem. Study on your own with one of our many approved learning partners, face to face with tutors, or choose a mix of all three. Or you could use ACCAX and study online. You can even gain a BSc degree from Oxford Brookes University and a globally recognised MSc degree from the University of London at the same time. Our specialism options allow you to be expert in your chosen field. Quality control? Check. The materials you use and the people who teach you have to meet our high standards. And our approved learning partners, ALPs, that have been specially selected are regularly assessed. We're here to support you. We have masses of online material including study guides, past papers and inspirational articles from top people who were once just like you. We'll also work hard to make exams flexible and convenient. We're always thinking ahead, looking for fresh ways to help you. There's already 24-7 support and tips with the ACCA learning community. And if English isn't your first language, BPP University can provide you with tailored English language support. This is your opportunity to get the right skills and knowledge to build your career as a finance professional. Register today via our website.
good side here, this is the camshaft. This camshaft is not the one using for the engine. A few moments later. Four moments later. <laughs> Fifteen minutes later. A few moments later. Twenty minutes later. Five minutes later. A few moments later. Salam sejahtera dan selamat pagi. Saya Isabella Maria, bekas pelajar sekolah SMK luar dari Bulan Pulau. Kata-kata mutiara saya untuk adik-adik tingkatan 5 tahun ini, orang akan bijak belajar ketika mereka dapat. Orang akan bodoh belajar ketika mereka terpaksa. Bermaksud tiada yang mustahil ketika kamu berusaha. Saya yakin adik-adik tingkatan 5 tahun ini, akan teruskan usaha dan yakin pada diri sendiri. Marilah menyertai ibu e SPM sekarang. Scan dan daftar ibu e SPM menggunakan QR code. Ia yang percuma untuk meningkatkan tahap keyakinan SPM anda sekarang. Semakan ibu e SPM, buat saja. Jom. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. What's up, guys? Welcome to Ebus SPM Revision Workshop.
Hello, good afternoon once again. Um, welcome, welcome everyone. Hi, Dorothy. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, hi, students, teachers. Welcome to our eBoost SPM revision workshop. Today's topic is biology. Okay, um, let me introduce our moderator of the day. Um, today we have Miss Dorothy. Hello. Yes, continue to type. Um, good afternoon. Say hi. Okay, so that we know you are here, right? Um, yeah, over to you, Miss Dorothy. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me very well. Hi, so hi to everyone who is saying good afternoon in the chat box as well. Hi, right, so thank you for attending today's workshop for biology. So I'm Dorothy Ma, your moderator today. I am a, lect bio, um, I'm a lecturer from Yam Institute of Technology, right? Currently teaching Cambridge A level biology subject as well. All right, so I would like to extend a very well, warm welcome to all of you. We appreciate you for taking your time off your busy schedule to join us today for eBoost SPM Revision Workshop for Biology, organized by UM Institute of Technology, right, in collaboration with the Miri District Education Office. So to kick off the program, right, please allow me to introduce our speaker today by reading his profile. Our speaker today will be Mr. Law Lee Ho Yap. Right, a very experienced biology teacher, which have demonstrated the ability to consistently right, personalize instructions to students. Right, in fact, right, he is he has been he had been awarded right with Sarawak Chief Minister Award in two thousand nine, as well as the Innovative Teachers Award in two thousand ten and two thousand eighteen. Right, so that shows how um his capability right as a very good biology teacher. And he is he was a former examiner in paper two for a total of seven years, right? So this means students, right, today you should pay close attention to him when he explains, right, about answering biology paper two today, right? When especially when he talks about the do and don't, right, for answering paper two biology, right? So they can score very well, right, for your SPM. And I guess, and I believe that's why you are attending today's workshop. So um he Mr. Lee right, was also a science graduate, right, certified in Bachelor of Science with honors. Right? So that means right, he knows what he's talking about for today's workshop. Okay, right. So I would before the session starts, right, before I pass the baton to Mr. Lee, students, if you have any questions during the session, right, please share your question in the chat options. Right? You are currently you would be muted throughout the whole session. So if you have any question, please leave your question in the chat option right, at any time. And your questions will be read right, either during the end, at the end of uh, Mr. Lee's sharing, right, during the Q&A session, or right, he would look at the chat box and he will answer you during the session as well. Okay, right, so just feel free to leave your message, um, your, your question in the chat box. If you did not answer it during the session, right, I will raise the questions but at the end of his sharing session as well during the Q&A session. Okay, All right, so now it is with pleasure, but right, let us welcome Mr. Lau right, to kick off today's eBoost Revision Workshop for Biology. All right, Mr. Lau, pass to you. Mr. Lee, actually. Oh, Mr. Lee. Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right. I don't know why I have Lau here. Okay, sorry. Oh. Sorry, Mr. Lee. All right. Yes, um, students, I as assume that this is uh, for students in the hall of Sarawak, right? Yes. Yes. Including, have, uh, yeah, not just Miri. Yeah. Not just Miri. We have students from Kuching, from um, Seri Haman, Bau, uh, Seri Ke, Kape, um, Sibu, Bintulu, Lingbang, Marudi, Lawas. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So are you able to see the presentation, student? Can you see? Mm -hmm. 
รนะก็ I'm doing uh, paper two this afternoon right assume that uh, you have no problem with paper one paper one is just a, a multiple choice question right anyway just for a brief uh, introduction uh, so bio paper two consists of three parts three sections I got. Is it clear or not? Well, okay. Clear? All right. So there are three sections in uh, paper two. Session A, you have uh, eight structured questions, which is uh, around uh, 60%, uh, 60 marks. Section B, two essay questions, uh, 20 marks for one question. Okay. So you only answer one. Huh? And section C, uh, one essay question, no choice, you have to answer. So all in all, you add up to 100 marks, right? So there are five main themes in the KSSM syllabus. Three teams in form four, and uh, no, two teams in form four, and three teams in form five, right? So you have fundamentals of biology, all about cells, about the chemicals in the cells, right? Chapter one to chapter um, six. Okay? Then uh, you have sub, sorry, chapter seven. Then you have the physiology of human and animals. So that include respiration, about digestion, reproduction, your skeletal system, your, uh, your coordination and response. Right, so all under animal, human and animal physiology, there is uh, until chapter 15 uh, of form 4. And you have um, form 5, mostly on plants. You have uh, structure and function of plants, reproduction, okay, and then adaptation of plants to the environment. And then uh, you have another team, ecosystem, and uh, environmental sustainability. And the last theme will be inheritance and genetic technology. So, which one will, will be asked? I, I would say all, all the five themes will be covered in the syllabus. So, you cannot just simply um, target one theme only okay, or certain topics. Definitely, there will be questions from one of these themes, uh, all the five themes. All right? So, we start off with. Uh, Section A, yeah. In section A, the structured questions. They have um, eight structured questions, and there are keywords that the question tasks that you need to know. Okay? Uh, the common one are name or state or define. Okay, uh, label usually for diagram. Illustrate that means you have to draw. Um, describe, now uh, you can describe a structure or a process, explain, you have to give reason, okay? And then uh, you compare, you have to write the similarities and differences and justify, these are usually for um, essay question. Uh. You agree or disagree with a, a certain uh, issue, you write the pros and cons or your the advantages and the disadvantages. All right. So these are the, the normal, the usual keywords that you you uh, encounter in paper two. All right. So I'm not going to deal with paper three. Paper three, I think you have, have I believe that most of you have already um, um, uh, last night, uh, last night's Didic TV. Do you watch or not? I think it was at eight o'clock last night. Uh, there was a, a brief introduction of uh, how the practical uh, paper will be question will be asked huh, in the uh, SPM exam. Okay, it's a uh, forty-five minutes uh, practical. So that one, uh, we today we are only doing focusing on paper two. Huh? Okay, so we start off with uh, structure questions. Okay, the most basic one. Let's take the model. Okay, this is uh, one of the uh, questions that I choose from, from four. Huh? So, if the question asks you to state something, 
you don't have to explain, all right? You only have to write down the, the, the answer right away. So state the model that describe the structure of the plasma membrane. So if you remember your form four, chapter three, you learn about the Singer and Nicholson's uh, fluid mosaic model. Okay, so it's named after this model, uh, fluid mosaic model. So just write down the, the name. No need to explain. And this is usually one mark on it, right? So this is very low level question. You only need to uh, what, what they call uh, Keba, eh? Kemaheran Bafikyu Arasalenda. So this is just testing on your understanding, your knowledge and your understanding on it, right? So this is a question on state or define or name, okay? So next, this is slightly uh, advanced, describe. When you describe something, you describe the structure, for example, here, describe the structure of the plasma membrane based on the fluid mosaic model. Okay, so um, what is fluid mosaic model? So what, what do you know about that? Okay, so when I say fluid mosaic, so we're referring to the model proposed by Singer Nicholson, it consists of two layers of phospholipid, okay, and uh, protein molecules embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. So when you describe it, you describe the structure. Okay, since this is a structure question and you are only allowed to write within the spaces confined, probably three, three lines or four lines the most, right? So don't, uh, do not repeat what is already in the question. Okay? So you see the question says the structure of the plasma membrane based on the fluid mosaic model. You are not going to write the whole sentence, you copy the whole question. Okay? So you just start you, the, the first two lines here, the one that I underline, this is actually redundant. You don't have to copy down the words in the sentences. Okay? You can just start, start with here. It consists of two layers of Okay, phospholipid molecule and other components. <laughs> okay, so protein, cholesterol, carbohydrate, and embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. All right, so you, are, you don't have to copy down the whole question. You are only wasting your time and uh, you don't have much spaces to write later on. All right, so you start with here. It consists of two layers of phospholipid molecule and other components such as protein, cholesterol, carbohydrates, which are embedded, which are embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. Okay, so far so good. All right, so this is question on describe. Now, the next one, explain. So when you explain something, you have to give reason. Okay, so why is it called fluid mosaic model? What is the fluid, the fluid, the word fluid, what does it? Uh, what, what is the word fluid? Uh, what, what defines the word fluid here? Okay, mosaic. What is it called mosaic? All right. So when you say fluid, it means it is something which is dynamic, constantly moving, not static. Right. So you have to, have to explain the word fluid. So the two layers of phospholipid molecule are dynamic to, to, show, to show that you understand that it is not static. Okay. And constantly sliding against one another with other components such as protein, cholesterol, and carbohydrate embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. So they, this statement, the second statement, refers to the mosaic. Okay, so you have fluid, you have mosaic. Do you understand what mosaic, what how mosaic look like look like or not? Okay, mosaic as it appears in your bathroom. Okay, yeah, this is mosaic. Uh, you see the mosaic. It's made out of many, many uh, small, tiny squares, right? So they are not from one color only, they are from a few colors, okay? So you have probably white color and then you have green or blue uh, uh, small tiles huh? here and there. So this actually explains the word mosaic, okay? So that explains why, why the uh, singer Nicholson use the name fluid mosaic to describe the plasma membrane, the structure of the plasma membrane. So you have three levels of question here. Okay, first one you just state, state, okay, 
second one you describe and the third one you explain so probably explaining will, will give two marks or three marks okay? state probably one mark only so it, it depends on uh the task the question task huh, that they, they ask they expect you to to answer okay so first thing you have to read the, the question you know what the question wants right next so if the question asks for comparison you have to write down both the similarities and differences okay you have to list down similarities and differences so if there are a lot of to write then i suggest you draw a table for example in essay but if just in structure question probably one marks or two marks then uh, you just use the word whereas to show the contrast okay uh, so if it is an essay question you there may be probably five six differences then you draw a table mm -hmm. for similarity for similarities you use the word both okay uh, so i'll give you an example here okay animal cells does not have fixed shape whereas plant cell has a fixed shape so this is one difference okay another difference okay animal cell has no cell wall whereas plant cell has cell wall so here the word whereas already indicate that there is a difference between these two all right hmm. so far so good huh all right so when you compare tendon and ligaments uh, again, you write down the similarity and differences. Uh, the word compare means you have to write similarity and differences. Okay, by the way, uh, students, some of the slides here, they are wrong answers. Okay, so I hope you don't uh, just uh, screenshot and then you learn the wrong thing. Huh? You have to jot down, you have to get a pen and jot down what is uh, wrong here and then you have to make the correction. Huh? Not everything in that I display here are correct answers some are wrong answers which need to be corrected right okay here tendons are tough and non-elastic tissue which connects the muscle to the bone ligaments are elastic tissue which connect bones together all right is it correct or not okay this statement does it describe tendon yes it is tough okay it is non-elastic it connects bones to muscle to the bone and ligaments are elastic which connect bones together huh? actually the, the segment are correct but they are not they are not showing differences they are not comparing here okay so this is a the presentation of answer when you present it this way you are not answering the question you are not showing the differences okay you have one statement one one sentence to describe tendon one statement to describe ligament okay so don't do this way do not write this way eh? don't answer this way during the uh, exam and the proper way of answering should be like this okay so similarity both are connective tissues okay differences okay tendon ligament you draw a table one to describe the structure another one to describe the function okay so the structure of tendon it is tough and non-elastic. Ligaments are elastic tissues. Okay. Function tendon connects muscle to the bone. Ligament connect bone together. Okay. It joins a bone, bone to bone. Mama. Right. So this is a proper way of uh, presenting your answer. Right. Do not write one sentence to describe tendon, one sentence to describe ligament. Right okay photosynthesis versus respiration when you see i mark the, the word cross means it is wrong huh? so don't don't screenshot this answer huh? so photosynthesis and respiration how are they different okay photosynthesis it happened in green plants respiration it happened in animal cells okay this one re refer to plant this one refer to cell okay so this is not the way to to, to write even though you draw table and you, you, you present your answer in the table. It occurs in the chloroplast of the cell. It does not occur in the chloroplast of the cell, respiration. Again, this is not the way to answer. When you say it doesn't occur in the chloroplast, 
which part are you referring to? Is it the cell wall? Is it the cytoplasm? Is it the nucleus? Right. So you have to be specific. Okay. If photosynthesis happens in the chloroplast of the cell, then respiration happens in the mitochondrion of the cell. Right? You don't say it doesn't occur in the chloroplast because it can be it can be any component of the cell. Photosynthesis happens during the day. Respiration happens in the dark. Again, this is wrong. Wrong. In fact, it is very wrong. Right? Respiration happens at all times. Right? It happens in all living cells. And uh, photosynthesis is an anabolic process. Respiration is not an anabolic process. So when you do this, it can be any process. Right? So you have to mention anabolic versus catabolic process. You know, one is a synthesis uh, from simple to complex molecule. Uh, respiration is a breakdown of catabolism okay? from complex to simple molecule. So the proper way of presenting your answer is like this. All right? As long as you have the, comp the sentence written complete huh, in complete sentences. Uh, by the way, there are only right now four differences. I think there are more than that. And yeah, you can refer to your textbook. I think there are more than 10 differences between photosynthesis and respiration. Okay? So it happened in the cell containing chlorophyll, it happened in all living cells. Right? Uh, photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast of the cell, respiration in the mitochondria. Okay? So it happened, photosynthesis requires light, presence of light. Okay? Respiration, it does not require light, energy. And uh, photosynthesis is an anabolic process. Respiration is a catabolic process. Okay. Huh? Okay. Question or osmosis? I'll start with one more question first. Huh? Solution X is what? Which word to use here? Okay. Maybe you can check in the you can check. You can write down in the chat. Uh, solution X is you can say hypertonic. Hypotonic, hi. Two words, solution Y. So you are comparing two solutions. Water diffuses into the cell or, or out of the cell by osmosis. Right? Or solution X is uh, hypertonic, hypotonic towards the cell cell huh? or a particular cell, right? a plant cell or animal cell, be cytoplasm. Okay? So when you say hypertonic, hypotonic, it cannot stand alone. You have to say hypertonic to something, hypotonic to something, right? So hypotonic to certain cell, hypotonic to certain cell. And by the way, the word hypertonic, hypotonic refers to the solution. I advise you to, to, you to write, use the word to describe solution, All right? So this solution is hypotonic to the uh, cell set of the potato cell okay don't say don't write that don't don't write this like this way huh? this the potato cell is hypertonic to the solution okay uh, to, the, the, to the sucrose solution to 10 percent sucrose solution whatever right so I would rather you write down the you describe the solution rather than the cell. Understand? All right. If you have no problem, I continue. Uh, you, you can. Uh, you can. Uh, if you have any problem, you can uh, write in the chat. Uh. Okay. Next negative question. What are negative question? Negative questions are questions where they ask you to predict something. Okay. And then if the question is present is asked in the negative way, you also answer in the negative. Way, okay. So what happened when uh, this is not formed? Uh, when when there is no, when the Golgi apparatus is absent in the cell, okay. Or when this structure is damaged. For example, uh, what happened when the dorsal fin of the fish is damaged? Okay. Uh, or when the when the set the centriole or the spindle fiber fail to form. Okay. Or when this structure, this organ has been removed, what happened to the digestion of uh, lipid? Huh? 
But what happens when the, this enzyme stops production? What happens when the cell is poisoned? So this will question asked in the negative form, you also answer in the negative. Right? So uh, example, uh, okay. What happens if a cell is exposed Gumi. to poison? Okay. What happens when the dorsal fin is damaged? What happens to the food chain when the food chain is disrupted? When there's a hole in the septum of the heart? Okay, uh, later on I'll give you the show you the example. Okay. The pancreas has been removed. Huh? The cell division. NFS happened abnormally. What happened to the, the cells? What happened to the chromosome? Okay. What happened to the daughter cells? The spindle fiber fell to form. Okay. The spindle, the, the muscle or the ligament, the tendon is torn. So the cell is exposed to. Minta maaf, ha, saya interrupt sekejap. Uh, ada uh, saya nampak dekat chat room sana ada student tanya boleh pakai uh, campur bahasa ke bilingual language. Oh. Minta maaf, cikgu. Saya interrupt right. kamu sekejap. Okay. So since uh, because my I, I understand that I will I'm giving DLP DLP for DLP classes. Okay. okay. So my my no presentation worries. is in English. Ah, oh, no worries. Yeah, yeah. Can. Okay. So yes, you today also to... like this. All right. So if you uh. need me to speak in BM, I will, I will use bilingual. Ah, huh? uh, yes, yes. My Campo presentation here, my PowerPoint is English. Use uh. English. Yeah, no it's problem. It's for the benefit of the, the DOPs. Yes, class. got both. Yeah, yeah. Thank All you, right. Jigu. Okay. So a cell is as a cell is exposed to cyanide, a respiratory poison. Explain the effect on the transport of potassium ion into the cell. Okay. So kalau cell diracuni oleh uh, satu racun cyanida, yeah, satu racun respirasi. So apa berlaku? So you are not going to explain the function of the mitochondria, whatever, uh, no. Okay, so you have to explain, you have to read the question, uh, explain the effect on the transport of potassium ion into the cell. Okay? So what is the effect? So you answer right this way, potassium ion is transport by active transport, active transport requires ATP, okay? the mitochondria generate ATP, you are only explaining the function of mitochondria, you are not explaining the the, you are not answering the question. Okay? So if the question is asked in a negative form, you have to answer in the negative form. Okay? So uh, in the presence of cyanide, mitochondria cannot function. So this is negative. Okay? Why mitochondria cannot function? Because it's a respiratory poison, the respiracy. So cellular respiration is inhibited. Okay? So when there is no cellular respiration, there is no generation of ATP. So you see all the work cannot cannot not generated cannot occur cannot transport right so your answer also has been in the negative form right so racun has the racun sanida in the presence of cyanide right the mitochondria cannot function the cellular respiration cellular respiration is inhibited and okay? atp is not generated so without, without ATP, active transport cannot occur and potassium ion cannot be transported into the cell. So soalan yang negatif, jawapan pun negatif. Okay? Understand? Right? Ha, macam saya tanya kamu, apa berlaku kalau waktu hujan on the rainy day, you don't have umbrella. Ha, so you are not going to function, you are not going to tell me the function of the umbrella. Ha, so you have to expand on the Popular hari hujan mungkin uh, tanpa payung saya badan saya basah. Uh, you don't say fungsi payung dalam melindungi saya dari hujan, right? So you have to answer in the negative form. Uh, another another example. Okay, another example. Next one. Okay, the pancreas of a patient was removed during a surgical procedure. Okay, probably the person the patient had cancer or not. Huh? All right, so explain the effect on the digestion of food. Eh, apa kesan pada pencernaan makanan? Eh, so you write the function of the pancreas to secrete pancreatic juice, 
which consists of lipase, amylase, and trypsin, the lipase hydrolyzed lipid, which may be correct, which are correct, but the amylase hydrolyzed starch, trypsin digest the polypeptide to peptide. So these are actually correct, but you are not answering the question. Okay? Why? Because this is not in the negative form. So what happens when you have no pancreas? Okay? So again, negative answer. So, no. Stop. Okay. So cannot. So without the pancreas, there will be no suspicion of the three enzymes, huh? lipase, amylase, and trypsin. Okay? So no lipase, no pancreatic amylase, and no trypsin in, in the pancreatic juice. So because of that, the hydrolysis of lipid is stopped or slowed down, right? So hydrolysis of polypeptide is stopped and because there's no trypsin, and starch cannot be hydrolyzed completely right? or incomplete digestion of starch, incomplete breakdown of starch, right? So this, again, the answer is in the negative form, right? Next. Okay, be careful with confusing words. There are a lot of words in bio which may confuse the students, right? So there, you learn synapses in form 4. Right? You also learn synapses in form 4, but they are from different chapters. Synapses refer to the pairing of the homologous chromosome during phase 1 of meiosis. Right? Synapses refer to the junction between the two neurons, okay? Uh, different, they are totally different. Carcinogen, casinogen, it may sound the same, but they are spelled differently, they mean different things, okay? Carcinogen is a cancer-causing agent. Carcinogen is a uh, milk protein. Uh, when you add uh, with, you add with uh, renin, it becomes casein, right? Curdus milk. Okay, renin cuddles casinogen to casein. Stoma and stroma. Right? This refer to the opening. Right? Or gaseous exchange in the leaf. Stroma refer to the part of the chloroplast. Right? Where the light independent reaction occur. Mucus. Mucus. Okay. Spelling different. This is the first one, mucus refer to your membrane, the mucus membrane. And this mucus refers to secretion. Okay. Absorption and reabsorption. When do I use the word absorption? When do I use the word reabsorption? Absorption of water in the colon, in the large intestine. Okay. Resorption refers to the reabsorption of water on the glucose in the kidney, the nephron of the kidney. Polysaccharide, polypeptide, and polynucleotide, all are polymers. Okay. Polysaccharide refers to the complex carbohydrate. Polypeptide refer to a protein. Polynucleotide refer to your nucleic acid. And the six antis, antigen, antibody, antiserum, antibiotic, antiseptic, antitoxin. All right? There are different things. Huh? I don't have to tell you the, how are they different. Arteriosclerosis and arteriosclerosis. Again, very misleading, huh? these two words. Again, they are referring to different things. Arteriosclerosis refer to the hardening of your blood vessel. Okay? Like calcium, huh? um, cholesterol, arterial refer to the narrowing of your blood vessel by like plaques, okay? saturated fats, and so on. Uh, plaque, this is the one that is deposited on the, on the inner wall of the artery. Plate is the, uh, as in bubonic plaque, the bubonic plaque, and the disease that uh, cause blood death. Okay? So they are spelled differently. Huh? Cholesterol and colostrum. Uh, this is another common mistake made by students. They confuse this two words. Right? Colostrum refers to the, the part of the breast milk right? that is rich in antibodies that confer passive immunity, natural passive immunity yeah? to the newborn babies. Right? Renin and, okay, these two, both are pronounced renin. Right? Uh, but they are different. Huh? This one, the first one is referring to the enzyme in the stomach, the curdus milk protein. Okay? 
Uh, this one, the second one, you don't learn actually at your form five level is a rainy angiotensin uh, aldosterone system in the kidney. I don't think you learn that in your form five level. Huh? Hydrolysis and photolysis are uh, another word that students always get confused. When you describe um, the light dependent reaction, okay, water molecule is split into hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion by light. Uh, that is photolysis. Okay? The splitting of water molecule is a physical process. Hydrolysis refers to uh, enzymatic reaction that involves the addition of water. Okay? In fact, most of the enzymatic reaction in your digestive system are hydrolysis. Right? Like lipids, hydrolyzed lipid into fatty acid and glycerol. Okay? Uh, sucrase, hydrolyzed sucrose to glucose and fructose. So don't confuse these two words. And this, the first one is a, a chemical reaction that involves enzyme. The second one is a physical, physical reaction that involves splitting water molecule into hydroxide ion and hydrogen ion. Okay? During the light dependent reaction of photosynthesis. And the last one, no, there are a few more. Um, TSA and TSA over B. So when do I use TSA? When do I use the word TSA over B? Okay. TSA refers to uh, the surface. So if I want to describe the alveolus, uh, why the alveolus is adapted for gaseous exchange, why, I, why the, the ileum has a lot of um, villus, villi. Okay? So I'm talking about the surface area, the total surface area. Okay? The TSA over B ratio, TSA refer to the organism. Okay? So you can describe uh, why, why is it that um, the larger animal, such as an uh, elephant, okay? You compare an elephant and a mouse. Which one loses heat faster? Is it the elephant or the mouse? Okay. So you have to mention the mouse loses heat faster because it has a bigger TSA over B ratio compared to the elephant. Okay. So large object has smaller TSA, TSA over B. Small object has small object has bigger TSA over B. Alright. So when you're talking about surface of a structure, for example, the, the, the ileum or the small intestine, the pillars of the small intestine, or the, the what is it? Uh, the alveolus. Okay? Then I refer to total surface area. When I'm talking about organism, okay? so I refer to TSA over B. Right, so be careful, huh? Don't write the wrong, don't you don't use don't use the wrong term. Epidermal and epidermis. Epidermal refer to cell. Okay, epidermis refer to tissue. The epidermis consists of a layer, or consists of many epidermal cell. Okay, so epidermal cell or epidermis refer to tissue, huh? The whole layer. And nutrient and food. Uh, in Bahasa, nutrient makanan, are they the same? Okay, for human, for animal, nutrient means food. Uh. Okay, but for plants, nutrients refer to something which is inorganic. Example, minerals. Okay, uh, food refers to something which is organic. So, you, it is wrong to write down the sieve tube transport nutrient. Okay. The sieve tube transport glucose, some transport glucose. So these are all organic material, or what you call food. The xylem transport nutrient, water and nutrient, okay, or minerals. So they are, you cannot use them, you cannot assume that they are the same thing, they are different things. Okay. So for plants, you have to be very careful. Nutrients refers to 
something which is inorganic and minerals. Food refers to something which is organic. Okay. For human, you can use them inter you can use them uh, interchangeably, uh, but not for plant. Okay. All right. What word to use in the exam? Be careful. Bind and combine. Are they the same? They are different. Okay. Bind. Substrate. Bind to the active site of enzyme. Enter antibody. Bind to the antigen. All right. Um, what else? Mm, neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter bind to the protein receptors. Hormones bind to the receptors of the target cell. Okay, uh, that's the word bind. Carry. Okay, the word in red, you should not use. Okay, don't use the word in red. Huh? Red blood cell, transport oxygen. Don't write carry oxygen. Okay. Blood supply oxygen, yes. Red blood cell transport oxygen, yes. But don't write send oxygen to the tissue, send oxygen to the, the body tissues. Okay, deliver. Don't use this word. These are very general term, huh? layman's term. Term. You use a uh, scientific language here, right? For red blood cell transport oxygen, accepted. But but not send, not deliver. Okay. Impulse. Impulse are transmitted. Okay. The sensory neuron transmit electrical impulse to the CNS, the central nervous system. Don't use the word carry. Don't use the word transport. Okay, for electrical impulse. Okay. Chapter 12 of form 4. How to use, when to use the word connects, when to use the word fuse, when to use the word articulate, or when to use the word join, when to use the word attach, right? Connects. In Bahasa, connects is menghubungkan. Okay? Articulate is menyambung, sambung. Attach is melekat. Different. Okay, when I say connects, uh, the tendon connects muscle to the bone. Okay, the ligament connects bone to bone. Ligament menghubungkan tulang dengan tulang. Okay, tendon menghubungkan tulang dengan otot. That is connects. Fuse, jantung. Bone fuse. Right? Uh, the cranial bone fuse to form the skull to form the immovable joint at the skull uh, the bone fuse articulate articulate means joint same okay uh, the thoracic vertebrae the, the thoracic the facet of the thoracic vertebra articulate with the rib bone to form the rib cage okay articulate means joint attach okay the muscle attach, the bone, the spinous process provides surface for the attachment of muscle. Okay, the spinous process pro provides surface for the attachment of the muscle. So attach is for muscle. Okay, cuaran spina membenarkan pelekatan otot. Okay, so attach is melekat. Connect, once again, uh, connect is menghubungkan. Fuse is mencantum. Okay. Uh, join is men, 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 menyambung. Eh? Ber, bersendi or menyambung. Okay. Uh? So don't use them. Don't use the wrong term. Eh? Reaction and action. Okay. Reaction refers to biochemical reaction. Okay. Action. Action refers to, uh, example, action of um, an, an 
antigen antibody action. Okay? The action of antibodies. The action of enzyme on substrate. Okay? Uh, don't use the word enter and leaves. This, these two words, don't ever use them. Okay? Use the word diffuse into or diffuse out. Right? The water diffuse into the cell or water diffuse out of the cell. Right? So don't use the word indicate here in red, nah? the one that I marked in red. These are not to be used in the paper two. Okay. Avoid ambiguous words in your um, explanation. Okay. Ambiguous means something which is not clear. Something yang perkataan yang kurang jelas. Okay. Changes. Influence. Affect. Okay. So, example. What happened to this cell when uh, this thing happened? Or you say, oh. The, the, the vehicle change. Right. So the cell change. So I'm not, I, I'm not, I, the premise may not know what you're talking about. What is changing here? Is it the color? Is it the temperature? Is it the pH? Right. So you say, well, the Benedict, the Benedict reagent change. So I don't know what is changing. Is it the color change? Is it the temperature? Is it the pH? Okay, so you have to be specific. It change in color from blue to brick red precipitate. Okay, influence. When something influence something, you are not you are not specifying whether it is increase or decrease. Okay, so you say, oh, this is influence. Uh, the the temperature influence the rate of enzyme reaction. So I don't know you're talking about increasing or decreasing the rate. Right. So you say influence is too general. So it be more specific. Huh? It increases the rate or it decreases the rate. Okay? Same thing with effect. Huh? Effect can mean increase or decrease. Okay? Move across. Is it in or out? Okay? So don't write move across. Diffuse in or diffuse out. Right? So these are very ambiguous words. Not to be used in the paper two. All right. What are the favorite questions in, in the exam? Eh? Okay. They like to ask questions on adaptation. Okay? If you look at the bio syllabus or you look at the past year question, there are many questions on adaptation. How the structure is adapted to the function. Okay. How is the bilus adapted for nutrient absorption in the ileum? Okay. The ileum has a lot of bilus. What are they for? How are they adapted for nutrient absorption? So you give the reason. So here you have to give the, uh, you have to explain. Okay. So mid microvilli, it has a lot of microvilli on the surface. For what purpose? To increase surface area. So this is structure. This is the function to increase surface area. Okay. The wall of the villus is one cell thick. This is the structure. For what? For rapid or efficient nutrient absorption. So this is the reason. A large network of blood capillary. That's the structure. Capillary. For what? For transport of digested food. Okay, the food that absorbed and then later on they need to be transported to the uh, liver okay, and so on. It has lacteal for adoption of fat soluble substances. Okay, uh, so you have to give structure and function. So these are question of adaptation. Okay? So you don't talk about uh, the, the ileum the, is six meters long, the, the elementary canal is six meters long, it's highly folded. Okay? And so what all these mean the same thing, increasing surface area. Right? So you, 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 you are not, you are not, you are not uh, associating structure with function. Right? So the function will be here, increase surface area for rapid diffusion of huh, the digested food and so on. Okay. Next. 
are alveolus. How is the alveolus adapted for gaseous exchange? Okay, so it has numerous air sacs to increase surface area for efficient diffusion of respiratory gases. On the one in red, okay, when you write like this, you are telling the premise that you know that there are a lot. So because there are a lot, numerous, okay, of course, the surface area will be larger. Right. So numerous air sacs to increase surface area, this refers to the structure. And then the function of it for efficient diffusion of gases. And the bigger the surface area, the more efficient will be the diffusion of respiratory gases. Okay. The wall of the alveolus is one cell thick. So when you say thin, how thin is thin? One cell thick, the structure. Function for rapid diffusion. By being thin, right, the gases can diffuse faster. Large network of blood capillary. Again, for what? For transport of respiratory gases. Okay. And moist for the respiratory gases to dissolve. So when you write this kind of answer, you must have the correct term to describe the structure. So make it, make it like this. Huh? You must have the correct um, keywords to pair with the structure. When I talk about ASX surface area, I relate with efficient diffusion. When I said one cell thick, I relate with rapid diffusion. When I say blood capillary, I must pair up with the word transport. When I have the word moist, I have to pair up with the word dissolve. Then you are safe right? to describe the structure and the function. Okay. Another thing in Paper two is diagram. Okay. So sometimes they may ask you to draw diagram. So this one, yeah, six rules to follow. Huh? When you draw diagram, please do not draw 3D diagram. Okay. So this is 3D diagram. Can you see or not? Okay. 3D diagram. What is 3D, 3D diagram? This is 3D diagram, right? So don't draw 3D diagram. This is the, what is it? This is the plasma membrane. Okay, ni membrane plasma dalam bentuk 3D. You are not supposed to draw this. You draw this, okay? I need dalam bentuk 2D. And okay? of course, you don't have to draw so many. I just draw probably two or three enough. And one of this, one of this, one of this, huh? Two of this enough already. and don't waste time drawing the whole thing. Rule number two: use pencil uh, for drawing. No broken lines. Do not use broken line. Okay. No sketching. Jangan buat lakaran. Uh. Okay. Label. All diagram must be labeled. Do not use arrow for labeling. Okay. Saya akan check untuk anda semua. Okay. Uh, piece of the mind, huh? okay. The label you have to use line, do not use arrow huh, for labeling. Okay, and then uh, line must not cross, tidak ada persilangan, garis tidak boleh bersilang. Okay, the diagram must be functional, mesti berfungsi. And rule number six, the diagram must be smooth, the proper size. Huh? Okay, so this is a 3D diagram, so avoid drawing 3D diagram, All right? This is 2D diagram, and this is good enough. Okay, how about this one? Can I draw this? Okay, this may look very nice, but it is 3D, okay? so don't waste time drawing 3D diagram. All right? Uh, this is 2D. This is okay, 2D. But there is something wrong here. Okay, which rule is broken here? Go back to the previous slide. Which rule? Rule number? You can check. The error, good. Okay, rule number three. So you do not use arrow here. Okay. 
Uh, so when do you use the word, you, when do you use arrow? Okay. When is arrow used in the diagram? Arrow can only be used in three cases. Okay. Number one, to indicate direction. Example, water diffuse in, huh? oxygen diffuse in, carbon dioxide diffuse out. Uh, to indicate direction. All right. Number two, arrow also can be used for chemical array, chemical uh, equation. Right. For chemical equation, you can use arrow. And number three, of course, for um, process. Okay? From this stage, need to another stage process. Huh? So for direction, for chemical equation, and for process. Huh? From one stage to another. And then you use arrow. So when you draw diagram, please just use line. Okay? No, don't use arrow. Okay, what is wrong here? Okay, this one you see, crossing, uh, the line crisscross. So there should not be any garis uh, bersilang in bahasa. Okay, no crossing. So you label on the left or on the right. Number two, this diagram is not functional. You see, the, the, the plasma membrane is already leaking here. Uh, cell to the bocho, the cytoplasm to the, to the leaking, uh, to the... Okay, so it must be complete line. And then you see double line here, double A. Okay, it has to be smooth. It must be smooth. Garis must be lichin. Okay. So this is not functional. Right? So this is not the way to draw a biological diagram. Eh? Right? Next, sketching. Do not sketch. When you see sketching, you can see double line. Double line here. Okay. Uh, this is sketching. This is not bio. This is a Sunny visual PSB. Okay. So in bio, there is no double line. All the line, there's only one line. Uh, example this. Okay. Only one line. Only one line, you see? There is no double line. All right. There are only three structures with double line in bio. What are they? All other things, only one line. Only three components you can use double line. The mitochondria, the chloroplast, and the nucleus. Because these are double membrane components. Okay? The mitochondria is double membrane. It has an inner membrane which is highly folded. And the chloroplast is also double membrane. The nucleus is also double membrane. Okay? So all other components, single membrane. The lysosome, the ribosomes, the vacuole, okay, they are all single membrane components. Right? Cell wall is one, plasma membrane is another one. Okay? They are different. Huh? This one may, may appear that double or two, but actually they are two different things here. Okay? Uh, so only mitochondria, you use the, the two lines, chloroplast, mitochondria, and nuclear membrane. Okay, be line. Uh, when you draw, okay, only one line. Huh? When you draw, you are conveying to the pamriksa what you know. Right? So when you see this one, you are showing to the pamriksa, you know it is one cell thick. Okay? The epithelium is one cell thick. Right? Do you know the word epithelium and epithelial cell? Epithelial cell refer to one cell. Epithelium refer to the tissue, the whole layer. Okay, so the epithelium is one cell thick, one cell in thickness, right? Consists of many epithelial cells, huh? uh, one layer of epithelial cell. So here you already show that you know, you understand that it's one cell thick. Okay, right? so this diagram is good enough, only that you don't use the word, don't use the arrow, huh? right? The, the, this arrow can be used to show the direction of blood flow, huh? but not this one. For labeling, you don't use arrow. Just, you just use one line. Okay. Ah. Another thing, so one, one important thing that you need to know is drawing is a skill. Drawing is a very important skill. Right? Ah. So when you draw 
villi, microvilli. And this is the way of drawing microvilli. Not this. The one on the left is not the way to draw microvilli. Okay? This one refers to ciliated epithelial cell. This one on the one on my right refers to the microvilli in the in the villus. Okay? In the villus. Because the epithelial cells have, have a lot of finger-like projection called microvilli for the purpose of increasing surface area, but not the one on the left. The one on the left refers to the epithelial cell with cilia, ciliated epithelial cell. They are drawn differently. And this one has no purpose in increasing surface area. The cilia is for sweeping, right? sweeping the, the, the eggs. And we find this in your fallopian tube of the female fallopian tube. It sweep the, sweep the morula into the endometrium right, for implantation. Or also find, you also find the ciliated epithelial cell in your respiratory tract, and your, your trachea, your, tra your bron bron bronchus, huh? and so on. It has the purpose to trap uh, dust, huh? trap particles, and so on. So they have different function. Okay? So when you draw, don't draw the wrong thing. Yeah? Okay. Be careful with this word based on the diagram. If the question have this word based on the diagram, you have to answer based on the diagram. You cannot write anything that is not in the diagram. Okay? Okay. Based on the diagram, explain the meaning of antagonistic muscle. All right? So you have learned antagonistic muscle in your form four. All right? the biceps and the triceps. Okay. Antagonistic muscle are muscles which are opposite in their direction. When one muscle contracts, another muscle relax. Okay. This is not the way to answer. This is wrong. Okay. Uh, by the way, it is not opposite in direction. This is not Newton's third law of motion. All right. uh, maybe you say Newton's third law of motion. I agree that the opposite direction, when there's action, there's a reaction in the opposite direction. But this is opposite in action. Okay? Opposite in action. When one muscle contract, another muscle relax. Which muscle is contracting? Which muscle is relaxing? You are not, you are not saying. Right? So this is a very general answer. Right? So you have to mention based on this diagram. Antagonistic muscle are muscle which are opposite in the action. What do I mean by action? Okay. So when the flexor contract, the extensor muscle relax. So you can see here the flexor contract, the extensor relax, and the, the hind leg is folded. Okay? The hind leg is folded in exact shape. Uh, so you are explaining the diagram. Okay? Uh, so if I write triceps and biceps, do I get marks? No. Even though it is correct, biceps and triceps are also antagonistic muscle. Right. The, the, in, the external intercostal muscle and the internal intercostal muscle are also antagonistic muscle. But they are not in this diagram. This diagram only refers to the muscle in the grasshopper's hind legs. So you have to use the stimulus here, flexor and extensor. Right? Okay, next, uh, this diagram shows your bicep and triceps. So again, based on the diagram, explain the meaning of antagonistic muscle. So again, you say antagonistic muscles are muscles which work together but are opposite in the action. Okay, this statement is correct. For example, biceps muscle contract, tricep muscle relax. Okay, this one is wrong. Why is it wrong? Isn't one contract, one relax? All right. Bicep contract, muscle. Bicep muscle contract, tricep relax. But when you write bicep contracts, the arm will be bent. It is not straightened. Here, it shows the diagram of an arm which is being straightened. Okay. So when the arm is straightened, the triceps is the one that does the work. 
the tricep contract, the bicep relax. Okay, so this may explain antagonistic muscle, but it doesn't refer to the diagram. Okay, the diagram shows an arm which is being straightened. So you have to you have to write down the triceps contract and the biceps relax. Okay, so not this one. So the moral of the story is you read the question. You see what the question one. Huh? The question said based on the diagram. So your answer is based on this diagram, not based on what you remember. Okay, in the in your in your in your in your textbook from your textbook. No, right. So these are questions on diagram. Huh? So what diagram to know? There are forty five diagram that you need to know. Okay, before. March 2022, you have to know all this diagram. So probably you need to screenshot this, this uh, slide. Okay. Uh, animal and plant cell. You have to know how to how to differentiate, how to distinguish animal cell from plant cell. All right. The fluid mosaic model of the plasma membrane, the state of cell in the in different solution, how a plasmolized cell looks like, how a crenated cell looks like. How a hemolyzed cell look like, and in hypertonic hypotonic solution, the structure of polypeptide, polysaccharide, and polynucleotide, and the DNA, the the protein, the cellulose, starch, glycogen, right? Triglyceride, the three fatty acids and the one glycerol, okay. Nucleotide, the phosphate group, the nitrogenous bases, the four nitrogenous bases, and the sugar, the pentose sugar. Log and key model okay, of enzyme and substrate. Formation of extracellular enzyme. Remember, from the ribosome in the nucleus to the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the secretory to the transport vesicle to the Golgi apparatus. To the secretory vesicle and finally to the plasma membrane as extracellular enzyme. Okay, ini pembentukan enzyme extracell. Ini penting kan gambar ini. Fasa fasa mitosis dan meiosis. Okay, for fasa metafasa anafasa tilofasa. The cell cycle. Okay, digestive system from your mouth all the way to your anus, the alimentary canal. And the organs associated with the elementary canal, okay. Structure of the villus, structovillus, food pyramid, pyramid makanan, okay. Uh, blood vessel, the tiga jenis saluran darah, artery, vein, and capillary, blood capillary, okay. Uh, artery, dinding tebal, lebih berotot, more muscular, vein, less muscular. Less thick and larger lumen, okay. Buff present, actually no buff. The other injap, okay. Blood vessel, capillary, blood capillary, only one cell thick, okay. Ah, uh, heart, the four chambers and the four blood vessel, the pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, aorta and the um vena cava, right? And the circulatory system. Single, double, complete, incomplete, open and close. Yeah, in fish, in insects, in amphibians, in mammals, right? So these are the four form four diagram that you need to know. Another, some more here. Yeah? The three vertebrae: cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. You have to know how to draw and the structure, the function. Okay, which one have larger centrum? Which one have um, transverse foramen? Okay, which one have long spinous process? You need to know. Joints, the upper limbs and the lower limbs. Okay, with the tendon and ligaments. The three types of muscle: smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, and cardiac muscle. Okay, the three types of neurons: sensory neuron. Motor neurons and relay neuron, okay. Uh, neuron perantaraan, neuron 
the rear the neuron motor synapse the neuron transmitter eh the pre synaptic membrane the post synaptic membrane the vesicle reflex arc right the ganglion the dorsal root the ventral root and so on structure the brain eh? the hypothalamus the cerebrum cerebellum medulla oblongata kidney and the nephron okay the structure of the kidney where is the cortex where is the medulla where is the pelvis right where is the ureter where is the urethra where is the urinary bladder nephron the glomerulus the formal capsule and the renal tubule all the way until the collecting duct Yeah, proximal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule. Phagocytosis. Okay. Uh, the second line of defense. Follicle. How the follicle changes from primary follicle to secondary follicle to graphene follicle and eventually into corpus luteum in the 24-28 day menstrual cycle. Okay. Structure of the placenta. The chorion, the amnion, the sorry the maternal blood space eh? and the um, umbilical cord umbilical vein umbilical artery spermatogenesis and oogenesis you have to know the process huh? all the way from the primordial germ cell until the formation of sperm how for the egg and the ovum formation of twins identical twin and fraternal twin or even siamese twin Or what you call conjoined twins and antagonistic muscle in fish, birds, insects, and earthworm. Okay, so they are all different animals, but their muscles are antagonistic. Fish, you have the left and right myotome, birds, you have the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor, insects, you have flexor and extensor, earthworm, you have circular muscle and longitudinal muscle. This one you have to know how to draw. Huh? So, again, you can take the You can screenshot this, right? So make sure you know all, how to draw all this before March 2022. Form 5. Uh, these are the 15 diagrams in Form 5 that you need to know. Okay? How to draw the shoot tip and the root tip, the three zones, zones of cell elongation, zone of cell differentiation, and zone of cell differentiation. Okay? Secondary growth. And the primary growth, sorry, the primary xylem, the second xylem, the primary phloem, the secondary phloem. Okay, the cord cambium, the vascular cambium. Cross section of a leaf. Again, don't draw 3D, eh? draw 2D. The pericyte mesophyll, the spongy mesophyll. Okay, the epidermal cell, the upper epidermis and lower epidermis, the xylem and the phloem. Cross section of the dicot stem and root. Okay, which one is uh, monocot and dicot? How to differentiate monocot and dicot? The arrangement of the vascular bundle. Okay? This one you can refer to your textbook, the diagram in your textbook. Eh? The monocot, the vascular bundle are scattered. The dicot, the yeah, eudicot, the vascular bundle arranged in a ring. Okay, formation of pollen grain or microspore, formation of embryocyte or megaspore. Okay. Number six is for male. Number seven is for female. Okay. In plant, eh? flowering plants. Foot webs. Profile in the mangrove swamp. You have the three layer. Right? You have the Abyssinia and Sonalacia. You have the Rhizophora. And you have the Brugera. Okay. So these are the profile in the mangrove swamp. You have to know how the root look like. Prop roots. How are the prop roots different from the, the pneumatophores, the cable roots, and also different from the buttress root. Okay. The pyramid of numbers, biomass and energy, you can refer to your textbook. Nitrogen cycle is another important diagram you need to know. Okay the nitrogen fixing bacteria, the 
nitrifying bacteria, the denitrifying bacteria, okay, the decomposing bacteria. You need to know the nitrogen cycle well. Okay? This may come up in essay. Dichotomous key. This one, actually, you learn this in your form four, uh, no, form one. Okay? Dichotomous key. How you construct a dichotomous key using spider diagram. Okay, this one you learn in your form one science. He is also taught in form four. Eh? Global warming or greenhouse effect. Okay, schematic diagram in Mendelian genetics. How to draw a diagram from the parent to the offspring, F1, F2. Okay, whether it's monohybrid or dihybrid inheritance and partner square. So, these are the 15 important diagrams in form 5. Okay, you can screenshot this. Graph. There are 5 graphs in form 4 that you need to know. There are 6 graphs in form 5 that you need to know. And, and you need to know how to explain them. So, enzyme graph. There are 4 graphs about uh, factors that affect enzyme reaction. Temperature pH, enzyme concentration, and substrate concentration. Oxygen depth, the, de the graph, eh? oxygen depth, oxygen depth pair off. Active and passive immunity. Eh? Yeah, and, and vaccine versus anti-serum. You have to know this graph. Menstrual cycle, the four hormones, FSH, LH, S, uh, L, progesterone, Estrogen and progesterone. Okay? The four hormones in the menstrual cycle that regulate the menstrual cycle. And the human growth curve, sigmoid growth curve, the insect growth curve, the intermittent growth curve, staircase shape. Okay? So these are the form four graph that you need to know. The form five graph, you have growth curve in plant. You have the what? Perennial plant, the biennial plant. Right? The rate of photosynthesis, again, the four factors that affect that influence the rate of photosynthesis, temperature, light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration. Huh? You have the compensation point graph. You have the uh, effect of oxygen on the elongation of shoot and root. Right. High oxygen concentration elongate the shoot, but at the root, it is inhibited. Huh? Rate of transpiration, again, the four factors that affect the rate of transpiration. Temperature, light intensity, air movement, and humidity, and relative humidity, and continuous and discontinuous variation. Okay? The graph, histogram, and bar chart. All right? Next, the do's and don'ts in bio, in, in answering um, paper two. First, you have to identify the question task. Is it asking you on state, or name, or describe, or explain, or illustrate? Okay. So if the question says state, you don't have to give the reason. If the question says explain, you have to give the reason. If the question says based on the diagram, you have to re answer with, with reference to the diagram. Okay. If the question says name, the spelling has to be correct. Okay. If I ask you to name something, you make sure you have the correct spelling. If you get give the wrong spelling, marks may not be given. Okay. Second thing, look at the marks allocated. If the marks is just one mark or two marks, you don't have to write a lot. Okay. If the marks is three marks, marks allocated is three marks, you have to write minimum three points. Right? I don't say three points, huh? I say minimum three points. If the marks is two marks, minimum two points. I advise you to write three points. Huh? In case one point wrong, you still get maximum marks. Right? List now the keywords. The words that you need to be associated, associated to. Example, how the abulus is adapted for. Trans, uh, 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 how the abulus is adapted 
for gaseous exchange. Okay, so when I see I write the word moist, I have to associate with dissolve and moist for the respiratory gases to dissolve. When I write the word one cell thick, I have to associate with the word rapid diffusion of respiratory gases. When I write the word numerous uh, large network blood capillary, I have to associate with the T word transport of respiratory gases and so on. Right? And make sure your, your sentence are complete. And don't write sentences which are incomplete. So these are the do's. What about the don'ts? Uh, these are the don'ts. Do not copy the question. Whatever in the question, you don't copy them. Okay? Because when you copy them, you are wasting your time. No marks will be awarded. Right? So don't waste time copying the question. Re don't repeat the words you given in the question. Okay? Don't use the word repeat given in the question. Do not use abbreviation. S-E-R, R-E-R, G-A. -R. This is not the correct word. word. Okay? The proper word is smooth endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum, and so on. And okay? Goji apparatus. Clear? Okay. Huh? Uh, but there are some abbreviations that are allowed. Example, ATP. ATP is allowed. Okay. FSH is allowed. Follicle steam mapping hormone. All right. TSH, thyroid steam mapping hormone, is allowed. ACTH, adrenal corticotropic hormone, is allowed. And, but not this one, not S E R R E R H G A. Okay, we have four more slides to go. Okay, when you write essay, you choose an essay you are most confident with. There are two questions. Question B, you choose one. It could be one question from form four, another question from form five. Okay, of course, section C, you have no choice. You cannot choose. There's only one question. But section B, you can choose. So I will advise you to choose. A question with many parts, part A, part B, part C. Okay, don't choose a question with just one part on it or two parts. Part A ten marks, part B ten marks. In case you answer out of topic, you lose ten marks or you lose twenty marks. Okay? Let's say I have one question: part A one, part A two, part B one, part B two. So five marks each. If I answer out of topic, probably the most I lose is five marks on it. I don't lose twenty marks. Okay, unless you are very confident that question. The topic you have already studied and you studied well for the topic so preferably choose a question with many small parts with a reasonable allocation of marks huh? and don't spend more than 25 minutes of, for one question okay bearing in mind you have eight structure question for that eight structure question will be one hour and a half okay the essay another one hour so two hours and a half so one essay, you only can spend uh, 25 minutes at the most. Okay? You still need another five minutes for checking. So maximum 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, proceed to the next question. Don't spend time okay, on that same question. Okay? It is better to spend time on another new question because you have fresh idea. Okay? So, Maximum, uh, 25 minutes for one question, for one essay question. So when you write essay, must have facts and you have an explanation. Okay? One fact, one explanation. So how do I know I have explanation? You, you have the word, so that, and because of that, okay? therefore, and then you are explaining. Uh, I, uh, you had numerous essays, so that, Diffusion of gases will be faster, more, be more efficient. It has a lot of blood vessel, blood capillary, in order to transport respiratory gases. Right? So you are explaining. So you have this word, it help, help you to explain. Sometimes diagram may help you to get marks. Huh? So sometimes you draw and get marks. Of course, handwriting, I prefer you write something which is neat and legible, huh? easy to read. Okay. Be fair, beware of the word will. Don't simply use the word will. Okay? Uh, when I say will, 
it means it's definitely going to happen. Okay. Uh, for example, smoking. Smoking will cause lung cancer. Is it? No. If you say smoking causes lung cancer, then everyone who smoke will get lung cancer. Okay. Or you say uh, intake of saturated fats and cholesterol will cause cardiovascular disease. So whoever take fats and cholesterol will get cardiovascular disease. Hey, no. They don't cause cardiovascular disease. They increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. Okay? Smoking increases the risk of lung cancer. It doesn't cause lung cancer. It only increases the risk of getting lung cancer. Right? So please, huh? the word will indicate that that thing is that event is going to happen. Definitely going to happen. Okay? Next. So keep your sentence short. Don't write a sentence which are very long. The longer you write, you may end up one sentence having a few statements and they contradict one another. So when there is contra contradiction, you end up with WCR. What is WCR? WCR means wrong cancer, right? Okay. So I will advise you to write with short sentences. One sentence, if, if possible, just limit to one point. Okay, uh, then it the risk of contradiction will be less. So, in other words, kiss K I S S, keep it short and simple. Okay, keep it short and simple. Kiss. So, a good student knows how to kiss. Right, point form. Do you like to use point form? Uh, some Pamrisa may advise you to write paragraph. All right. So actually, whether you write paragraph or you use point form, they will still mark. On the condition, you don't use dash, you don't use bullet. Right? You can use point form, even though some Pamrisa will advise you to use paragraph. Huh? But on the condition you write in complete sentence without dash, without bullet. Okay. So when you use dash and bullet, you have the ten tendency to write incomplete sentence. Okay. Ah, look at this example. All right. What happens to a tomato to a tomato plant which is given too much ammonium nitrate solution fertilizer? And you push too much, you put too much fertilizer in your tomato plant. Okay, so I answer this way. Okay, the soil water becomes hypertonic to the tomato plant, causing the plant to lose water and wilt. The tomato cells undergo P plasmolysis and the plasma membrane pull away from the cell wall. Okay, uh, maybe you say the cell becomes flaccid, the plant dies, and so on. All right, there is contradiction. Do you notice that? Right. Where is the contradiction? Okay, first point. There are two sentences here. The soil water becomes hypertonic to the tomato plants, causing the plant to lose water and wilt. Okay, this statement is already wrong. Okay, do you spot the mistake or not? Hypertonic to the tomato plant. No, it has to be hypoton hypertonic to the tomato plant plant cell okay not the plant the plant cell or you want to be more specific the plant cell sap all right uh. second segment the tomato cell undergo d plasmolysis and the plant cell membrane pull away from the cell wall so this one is contradiction here the tomato cell undergo plasmolysis not d plasmolysis Okay, undergo plasmolysis and loses its turgidity. Or you can say it becomes flaccid and the plasma membrane pull away from the cell wall. So these two are contradiction. 
or you end up with WCR, wrong cancer, right? All right. So don't answer this way. Look at this one. Uh, this is in the form of point form, but it is in complete sentence. No dash one, no bullet. Uh, this is correct. The addition of ammonium nitrate increasing, increases the solid concentration of the soil or soil water, okay? or increase the solid potential. Or in other words, it becomes hypertonic. Huh? So this will lower the water potential in the soil water. The soil is hypertonic to the plant cell set. Right? Actually, point number two and number three are considered as one point. Huh? Water diffuses out of the tomato cell by osmosis. The cell becomes flaccid or loses its turgidity, or the plasma membrane pull away from the cell wall. This is considered the same point. All right. So you can easily, the cell undergo plasmolysis, the plant will, and eventually die. So you can get six points here, seven points here. Okay. So when it, this is AC question, you don't even have to write a lot. Probably a seven lines, you, get, you can get seven points at it. All right. So these are examples of answering a question. Okay, so now it's already four o'clock. I'm we'll now look at another example. So we are going to look at three uh, structure question and one a question. Okay, so see how to answer. How do you answer structure question and a question? Huh? So I'll stop sharing for a while. Now we go to the next slide. Next slide is over here. Huh? Okay, before I go to the next slide, do you have anything to ask? Can you check, put inside the chat box here? Um, Mr. Degoli, uh, just now earlier on, I noticed some students asked, um, for yes. example, Lydia. Lydia asked for how many marks is the full marks per diagram? Come again. Um, Lydia asked, right, what is the full marks for diagram? Ah. It, it depends on the question. Sometimes, sometimes when you write something, you explain something, it is not explained in your description. Right? You describe something, but you did not write it down. But when you draw it, it is in the diagram. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that diagram, you are conveying to the premise that what you know, example, huh? Okay. Uh, for example, uh, uh, you draw the villas just now. Uh, you draw the villas. You forgot to mention about it is one cell thing. But you draw the epithelium, it has only one cell. That Amisa mm -hmm. knows that you are you understand that it is one cell thing. Right? Mm -hmm. So from your diagram, it is already compared to the Pamisa, it is one cell thing. So diagram sometimes may help you to get marks. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you, I am not asking you to draw diagram every time, right? But it may help you to get answer, right? Mm. Okay, Any more? There was another question from another question from uh, from Lydia. I uh, know not from Hana. Hana asked, right? When answering comparison questions, can she use table form? If it is differences, right? Of course, similarity, similarity use the word whereas uh, both, both, uh, huh? both are uh, this and that. Uh, differences, you use table. Yes, you are advised to use table. Provided complete sentence. Okay, I will show you the example later on. Huh? I have one example. Okay. All right. Huh? Any more? Um, no more. Okay. Huh? So, okay. Now look at this question. This is a form four question. Structure question. This is about the structure of the heart. Okay. So name, note, P. Again, name. So you have to write the correct spelling. Okay. So what is note, P? So here, note, P refers to the sinoatrial node. Okay. So write down sinoatrial node. Spelling must be correct. Huh? Explain the function of not P. Okay, one, two marks. So how many points? How many points? Minimum two points. Okay. So you not don't name it anymore. 
he already named in part one. Okay, so what does the node P do? So the pace, the node P is the pacemaker. Okay, it is the pacemaker. So you describe what the pacemaker do. So it initiate the the generation of the in electrical impulse. Okay, so it initiate the heartbeat. So the pacemaker, not P, is the pacemaker one mark on point. It generate electrical impulse to mark the D, which is transmitted all over the wall of the atria. Hi, right. so it go to the atria, the wall of the atria, causing the atria to contract. Another point, the atria contract or atria systole. Okay, so when the atria contract, what is the effect? So the blood from the atrium will be pushed to the ventricle, okay? Now, causing blood from the atria, from both atria, to flow into the ventricle. So I have four points here, okay? So I get maximum two marks. The first point I mentioned about the SNN, the cyanoatrial node as a pacemaker. The second point I mentioned, it is a, it generates electrical impulse. The third point, it goes to where? It goes to the wall of the atria, and then it causes the atria to contract, pushing the blood into the ventricle. All right? Uh, so these are the answer here. The, when, as a pacemaker, okay, it generates electrical impulse, cause the wall, the, the atria to contract simultaneously, and blood is pumped into the ventricle. So you can just get, you get all the four points here, maximum two marks. Huh? So even if I get one point wrong, I still get maximum two marks. Okay. So you see that the answers, it, it's not really long. You can write in within the three lines here. Okay. Uh, you don't copy the answer here. You don't write the function of not P, no need. You just start with the word it. Okay. It is a pacemaker. It generates electrical impulse. Clear? Yeah. Name the blood vessel Q and R. So Q, uh, name, the, um, again, spelling has been correct. So Q is the aorta. R is the pulmonary artery. Okay, so spelling has been correct. Aorta and the pulmonary artery. Step to where blood flows in blood vessel Q and blood vessel R. Okay, so when this kind of question come out, in this kind of question, you have to answer based on the question. Since the question asks for Q, you answer Q first, followed by R. Okay, so blood vessel Q, so where is Q? Q is delta, right? Okay, blood vessel Q transport blood from the heart to the rest of the body, whereas blood vessel R transport blood from the heart to the lungs. Okay, uh, so you see, you answer Q followed by R. So you answer, you can answer in the form of a sentence. Okay, blood vessel Q transport blood from the heart to the rest of the body except the lungs, whereas blood vessel R transport blood from the heart to the lungs. Okay, uh, one money anyway. A child has problem with a hole in the septum. Explain how this defect causes the blood tissue, the body tissue, to have insufficient oxygen. Okay, so underline the underline, underline this word defect, and the defect is a hole. So when there's a hole here, when there's a hole here, what happened to the blood? Of course, the blood will mix, right? The left ventricle and the right ventricle, the blood will mix. Okay. And then when the blood mix, there are two implications. The first implication will be oxygen. The right ventricle, here you have deoxygenated blood. The left ventricle, you have oxygenated blood. So oxygenated blood transport pump blood. The blood from the left ventricle are pumped to the whole body, rich in oxygen. Huh? But when there is a hole here, the blood mix, that means the oxygen will be not as concentrated as when there's no hole. Okay, so when this happens, the body tissue, the brain, the muscle, 
will get blood with lower oxygen content. That is the first problem. Okay. The second problem, of course, there's a, a decrease in pressure. Right? Because when there's a, there's a hole, you cannot have, uh, just like when you have a water, your water pipe, there's a leakage, there's a ada kebocoran dalam pipe. Right? Of course, tekanan, da, tekanan air jadi rendah. Right? The pressure become lower. So the pressure will decrease. And so there's a second uh, implication uh, when there's a hole here. So, can I answer? Can I answer the pressure becomes lower? Okay. No doubt, memang tekanan jadi rendah. Right. But you are not answering the question. What the question says, what happened to the body tissue to have insufficient oxygen? Okay. So you have to relate with the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, not talking about pressure, even though it, ha it happens, although it happens. Okay, so the blood flowing from the right ventricle to the left ventricle via the hole in the septum cause the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Okay, and therefore the blood, the deoxygenated blood will enter the systemic circulation. The systemic circulation is supposed to bring oxygenated blood to the body tissue. But by now you have deoxygen, deoxygenated blood entering the systemic circulation okay now, when that happens then your body tissue will get less oxygen clear all right so when you answer the keyword here is here insufficient oxygen okay so you don't write other things you have to answer based on what the question wants clear so that is <coughs> question from form four. Okay, I have another question from form four here. Okay, this is uh, this is this is testing your ability in drawing. Okay, so one of the science process skill in bio is drawing skill. Okay, diagram five point one and five point two shows different position of forearm of the forearm during movement. Okay, so you can see here is the arm is bent. This one, the arm is straightened. Okay. Complete diagram 5.1 by drawing the tricep muscle, which is involved in the movement of the forearm. Two marks. So how are they going to give mark? Two marks for your diagram. Okay. How, I'm, how am I going to draw? Triceps. Uh, so here they give you the clue already. The hint is given here. This is the biceps. Uh, this is the biceps. This is the triceps. So this one is the biceps drawn. The triceps not drawn. So you have to draw the triceps here. So how are you going to draw to get two marks? Okay. So the marks given will be number one. Best. Is it on the label? Do you need to label or not? Is label required here? Read the question. By drawing the tricep muscle involved in the movement. The question did not ask for label. Okay, so you need not label. Even if you label, you don't get extra marks. Okay, okay, la, no harm labeling, but you don't get the marks. The marks are for the drawing. Okay, so when you draw the triceps, you have to draw it not as this, but long and thin because the fat. The short and fat muscle here shows that it indicates your understanding that it is contracting. Okay, so when this one on the biceps is contracting, the triceps must be relaxing. So how to show that you know it is relaxing? You have to draw it long and thin, just like this. Okay, so the one mark for the size of the muscle, it has to be long and thin. The second point given will be the attachment of the tendon. So if you don't know, refer to here. The triceps muscle has three tendons here. One attached to the scapula, two attached to the humerus. Okay, do you see that? So you have to draw two attached to the humerus, one to the scapula, and one to the ulna. This one is ulna. Okay, the biceps is to the radius. The 
tricep to the radius, the tricep is to the ulna. You can use this diagram as your guide. Right? So long as the tricep is long and thin. Right? So there are two marks here. Huh? So one mark for the drawing criteria. And maybe it may be bigger. Huh? The drawing criteria, the size and the shape of the tricep muscle must be thinner and longer than the biceps or mark. And the four tendons connected to the muscle. Why, where are the four tendons? Two to the humerus, one to the scapula, and one to the ulna. Okay, if you don't know, refer to the another diagram 5.2. Clear? Okay, next, so two marks. State one adaptive characteristic of P in diagram 5.1 to show the movement. Okay, what is P? P is between the muscle and the bone. So can you remember the name of the muscle, the tissue that connects the muscle to the bone? Apa nama tisu yang menghubungkan tulang dengan otot? Chat. Tendon. Correct? Good. Tendon. Tendon. So, nama sao T, T for two lang. O for otot, eh, tendon. So, muscle to bone. But if I write down the name tendon, do I get marks? You don't get marks. Why? Because the question did not ask for the name. The question say, step one adaptive characteristic. Satu ciri. Bukan nama dia. Ciri dia. So, what is the characteristic of tendon? Okay. So, the tendon is non-elastic or inelastic. Tidak kenyal. Okay? Tendon bersifat tidak kenyal. On the contrary, ligaments are elastic. Okay? But this is not ligament, this is tendon. Okay? Ligaments are elastic. Tendon are inelastic. Okay? Tidak kenyal. Kenapa dia tak kenyal? So that when the muscle contract, the force produced by the muscle can be transferred to the bone by the tendon. Okay, so it transmit the pulling force to the tendon, to the ligament, to the bone. But if it's elastic, then it will stretch. Right. So answer very simple, just one line. Okay, one mark on anyway. So it is inelastic. P is inelastic. Cukup. Okay. Tisu P tidak kenyal. Cukup. No need to explain. Okay. Here, then you explain. Explain the action of muscle which causes the movement of the forearm. Okay. How the muscle causes the forearm. So, you have to mention uh, when the muscle contract or which muscle. Okay. 5.2. So, 5.2. So, you answer 5.1, you get wrong. Yeah, you don't get marked. So question say 5.2. So when I say bicep contract, tricep relax and don't get marks. Okay, you have to answer this one. So this one is the arm is being straightened. So when the tricep contract, okay, one mark, it exert a pulling force okay, to the tendon. Okay, so the tendon will transmit the pulling force to the ulna and pull the ulna. Right. When the tendon pull the ulna, the arm is straightened. Clear? All right. So you have to answer like this, huh? When the tendon, oh, sorry, when the triceps contract, it exert a pulling force, which transmitted to the tendon, that pulls the ulna, causing the arm to be straightened. Then you get. Three marks. Okay, so one mark for the pulling force transmitted to the tendon and then pull the ulna and then the arm becomes straightened. Okay, the effect is the arm becomes straightened. If I answer the arm becomes bent, then I, go, I don't get marks huh? because I'm not answering the question. The question says 5.2. Okay, and last one tissue X. Tissue X, any idea? This is the cartilage, right? So what is the health problem? 
faced by the old person when x is impaired. Okay, so when x is impaired means the cartilage is already worn off. Okay, so that it can cause arthritis, osteoarthritis. Okay, and you have pain, painful joint, knee pain. Okay, so what is the health problem? You need to explain it. So the health problem is arthritis. But how do you get arthritis? The wear and tear of the cartilage. Okay, the wear and tear of the cartilage cause the bone to rub against the bone, and this will cause knee pain or joint pain. Okay, uh, so the the effect will be difficulty in movement or walking because it happened the knee, right? Okay, so then knee knee pain or inflammation of the knee joint caused by the wear and tear of the cartilage or the degeneration of the tissue X. Okay, the condition is called arthritis huh? or osteoarthritis. Clear? Okay. Huh? So I skip, huh? I, I, I try to rush because I have a few more questions here. Okay, I, I just tell you the important thing that usually students make mistake here. Okay. Uh, this is a inheritance question, question on inheritance, mono hybrid. So you have two rabbits here, black and black, cross, and then you have three black and one white. So you know when you have two blacks and you get one white, that means the parent must be heterozygous. Right? Heterozygous. So it's already mentioned here. Capital B represents dominant allele, black fur. Small b represents the recessive allele or white fur. Right? So I think I, I skipped now. Huh? So look at step the genotype and phenotype of rabbit P. So rabbit P is black fur, right? So the genotype will be. Big B, big B, or big B, small B. So, is, can it be big B, big B? Can it be big B, big B? Genotype. Cannot. Because if it's big B, big B, all the offspring will be black color. Right? So, this U is white color. So, this one must be double recessive. That means both parents must have at least one. The both parents must have one small B. Okay? So, P must be heterozygous. So the answer will be big B, small B. All right? And then the phenotype black fur. Don't write black, huh? You have to write black fur. Okay. Okay. Second one. What are the possible genotype of S? Okay. Possible genotype of S. Okay. Heterozygous. R is heterozygous. Okay. So if this one heterozygous, this one could be big B, big B, could be big B, small B. All right. So there are two answers here. What are the possible? They mean more than one answer. So how are you going to answer? Okay. So there are two answers. So you have to write big B, big B, or big B, small B. Okay. So some students write big B, big B, and big B, small B. No. Wrong. Okay. You cannot have both. You either have this or that. Okay. So is it big B, big B, or big B, small B? Not big B, big B, and big B, small B. Okay? You are either homozygous or heterozygous. You cannot have both genotype. Clear? So that is how you, this, the way you present your answer. Okay? Uh, another way, another thing is, another thing is uh, genotype. When you write genotype, you don't write like this, huh? You don't write like this. This is wrong. Okay. This is allele. You want you write separately. I can as I can say that you are writing allele here. Okay. When you write genotype, it has to be close together. Okay. It has to be close together. Not like this. Okay. You cannot have spacing there. When you spread spacing, it, has, it means allele already. Same thing for that hybrid. That hybrid, you write like this. Okay, uh, you don't write like this. Okay, uh, this is wrong. Okay, you have to, when you write genotype, you have to be close together. Clear? Huh? So that is for structure. Okay, A say, uh, this is one of the past questions. Okay, uh, there are two organisms here, X and Y. 
so x this is uh human uh -huh, human uh, circulatory system or mam mammalian secretory system this is a fish secretory system okay as a circulatory system right so explain the similarity and differences uh, see so there are similarity and differences head marks so x and y so which one to answer first x followed by y okay don't write y first huh? x first followed by y because the schema Japan is also planned in such a way it is x followed by y okay so you don't want to make life difficult for the premise when they mark huh? they already have the schema there x followed by y okay so similarity uh, both are closed circulatory system there's a description the question say explain now what do you mean by close so you explain now close means where the blood vessel are confined the blood vessel where the blood are confined the blood vessel so you're explaining the meaning of close okay uh, another similarity both have hearts right so what's the use of heart to pump the blood to the body cells okay both have valves in the vein so what's the use of the valve in the vein to prevent black fat flow of blood or to ensure blood flow in one direction okay so these are the symmetry so any two one symmetry one structure one function okay differences uh, then you can draw a table okay for x you have double circulatory system or double circulation or organism x has double circulation organism y have single circulation one mark okay explain what do you, i mean by double what do you mean by single so double means blood flows through the heart twice to complete its circulation single means blood flows to the heart once to complete its circulation so i'm explaining okay another one difference the heart has four chamber in x organism y the heart has four two chambers what mean do i mean by two four chamber consisting of two atria and two ventricle okay consisting of one atrium and one ventricle so i'm explaining the meaning of two chamber and one chamber all right clear student i remember this question came out 10 years ago a lot of candidates they wrote like this huh x has four chamber y have two chamber we they were not given marks because we you say four chamber and two chamber which part which organ you are not mentioning here and you have to specify the heart has four chamber you just say it has four chamber i don't know you are, which organ you are referring to okay you have to specify the heart next the oxygenated blood is pumped to the lungs in x in y the oxygenated blood are pumped to the gill right and then oxygen the blood are pumped to the body cells but in y oxygen the blood flows from the gill to the body cell okay in y the heart the heart the fish of the heart nah, is 100 percent is thoroughly deoxygenated blood in other words oxygen the blood is from the from the gill directly to the body cell okay it doesn't, doesn't need the heart to pump the heart only pump deoxygenated blood okay and last one the oxygenated blood flows at high pressure because it's hard to pump it but in y oxygen blood at the lower pressure because it's directly from the gill to the body cell not by the pumping action of the heart okay and then gaseous action occur in the lung some of occur in the gill or gill filaments right so you yeah, add differences here listed here you can write any six to get full mark right so this is one, one way of answering ac okay so far so good all right so this is my example of uh, how to answer structure question and ac question okay i have one more slide uh, this slide are uh, all the mistake done by the previous year's candidate i'm showing you showing you the mistake all right so if you want to 
copy, I, I, you can copy, uh, but uh, all these are mistakes, uh, so don't copy the wrong thing. Okay. Uh, by the way, Chagwali, one yes. student asked Eliezer Wong, can we just draw a table to answer the essay question? Can you draw a table to answer what? Can you only draw a table to answer the essay question? For answering differences, is it? I'm not sure. She just asked, he or she just asked, yes. Can you only draw a table to answer the questions? Uh, I and advise you to draw a table when you answer questions on differences. Hi. Only. How to differentiate spermatogenesis from oogenesis. How to differentiate uh, sensory neuron from motor neuron. Okay, and then you can draw you can draw a table. Otherwise, use you can write in the use the word both. Ah, Semiti use the word both. Don't draw a table. Okay? Semiti don't use the table. Differences you draw a table. Okay? Clear? All right. I have one more. I, I think I, I, I have to rush huh, because we only have less than uh, 30 minutes. This common mistake. Okay, I go very fast because there are 23 slides over, over here. So the common mistake by previous year's candidate, is it big enough? Can you see? Okay, huh? okay osmosis. When I talk about concentration, okay, the osmotic concentration of glucose solution is more concentrated than the potato cell or tissue. Okay, when you are referring concentration, you say higher or lower, not more concentrated or less concentrated. Okay. Higher concentration or lower concentration? Higher water potential or lower water potential? Clear? Mitosis. Okay. Question asked for the explain the significance of mitosis. So when I say explain something, you have to give reason. Okay. So what is the importance of mitosis to increase the number of cells? Okay. This is not explaining thing. For what? Increasing the number of cells or growth. Okay, so you are explaining it to increase the number of cells for growth. Okay, so when you say the function of mitosis is to repair damaged tissue, to replace that cell. Okay, how do you replace that cell? You have to produce new cells. Okay, so you have to say it produces new cells to replace that cell or produce new daughter cells to repair damaged tissues. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I say growth, to increase the number of cells for growth. So you are justifying your answer here. You explain it. Okay. Okay. What are the terms wrongly used by students? Enzymes are destroyed at high temperature. No. Don't use the word destroy. Enzymes is denatured at high temperature. At low temperature, enzymes are less active, not inactive. Okay? Inactive at high temperature, less active at low temperature. Starch is converted by amylase to maltose. Don't use the word converted. Starch is hydrolyzed because this enzyme is hydrolysis, right? involves hydrolysis and okay? addition of water. The rate of enzyme reaction pepsin, uh, is maximum and acidic pH. There is no such thing as acidic pH. There is only low pH or high pH. You have to say acidic medium okay? or low pH, but not acidic pH. Okay, all these are mistakes done by previous year's candidate. Huh? Okay, um, epiphytes, you know epiphytes? Epiphytes are plants that grow on another on the top of the, another plant. Huh? Uh, why are they on top? So that they can get more sunlight. Right? So the advantage of living on top of another tree, sometimes it can be on the roof as well, okay, is to get sunlight for photosynthesis. It may sound correct, but this kind of answer is rejected by Lembaga Perperiksaan. Why? For one reason, one word is missing. Okay? Just one missing word. Are you 
So if you write like this, you are implying that there is no sunlight on the ground, okay? Which is wrong. So when they are on top, you can get more sunlight. Not just sunlight, more sunlight, okay? So, so advantage of living on top of another tree is to get more sunlight, higher exposure to sunlight. Clear? Uh, another reason is maybe you can say escape from herbivore. Uh, right? uh, so by this one is about photosynthesis. Uh? Okay. Iron. Why is iron important in our diet? Okay. Uh, in fact, iron is more important in female than male. Right? Female need more iron than male. Why female need more iron than male? Okay. So it need for formation of hemoglobin. Where do you find hemoglobin to be more specific? In the red blood cells. Okay, so don't just write hemoglobin in the red blood cell. If I ask you why female need more iron than male, then you have to relate with menstruation. Okay, you will need to replace the blood loss and so on. Hmm. Next, uh, the world of the blood capillary is thin. Uh, don't use this word thin. When you say thin, how thin is thin? You have to be more specific. It is one cell thick. The xylem transport water and mineral okay uh, again this is something very misleading uh, you have to be more specific direction from where and from the root to the rest of the plant okay from the root to the leaf from the root to the shoot and so on the phloem transport products of photosynthesis okay translocation uh, again reject Lembaga Pepsan reject this answer. It may sound correct, but it is wrong. And when you say product of photosynthesis, what is produced during photosynthesis? I have oxygen as well. Right. Photosynthesis also releases oxygen. But is it transported by the plant, is it by the foam? Is it transported by the sieve tube? No. Okay. So when you say product of photosynthesis, I also you imply that oxygen is also transported. Okay, so you have to change into organic product of photosynthesis. Okay, the plume or the sieve tube transport organic product of photosynthesis. If you give example, I will be happier. You have example. For example, sucrose. For example, amino acids. Right. Uh, when red blood cells are placed in hypertonic solution, the, okay, these are very long answer. Okay, long answer. And because of one word, the whole thing wrong. Any idea where, where is the, which part is wrong? Can you check? Put in the chat there, what is wrong? What is wrong here? Anybody? Yes, very good. The cell set. Okay, cell set is referring to plant. Right, plant cell. So you, this is red blood cell. So you cannot use the cell set from the cytoplasm. All right. Okay. On the cold day, the skin hair are straightened. Straightened. Is it? The skin hair are erect. Right. The erector pili muscle contract to pull the hair erect. Or you can say erect, but don't use the word straighten. Clear? Mm -hmm. On the cold day, the skin hair are upright. Ah, yes, you can write erect or upright. But this one is wrong. This statement is wrong. Okay, They are upright to trap air not to trap heat okay it trap air which insulate heat you learn in science tingkatan tingkatan satu right haba deep no udara perangkap haba air trap heat you the hair doesn't trap heat the hair trap air the thicker the layer of air the better the insulation 
penebat yang lebih baik, lebih lebih tebal udara, lebih tebat, lebih lebih baik penebat sifat penebat. Okay, jadi boleh perangkat haba. So it trap a which insulate heat. Okay, on the hot day the hair fall, salah rambut jatuh, rambut gugur, salah. Okay, the hair lie flat. Okay, rambut condong, bukan gugur lah, not fall lah. The sweat gland produce sweat. Wrong ah, the sweat gland secret sweat. Okay, secret sweat. Sweating ah. The baby get the nutrient oxygen through the placenta, right? Ah, wrong. Placenta, nutrient oxygen, pass to who? To the fetus. Belum lahir, masih panggil fetus. Lepas lahir, baru panggil bayi. Hai, so bayi salah. Fetus mendapat nutrient. Okay? I have 10 more slides to go. I'm rushing, ah. Okay, secondary growth. When you draw secondary growth, you don't draw the same size, ah. You have to draw bigger. Okay. So the purpose of the secondary growth is to increase size of the stem and root. No. When you say increase size, it can mean longer, no? When it mean longer, that is primary growth. You have to say increase the diameter or increase the girth. Okay. Don't say increase the size. So increase size can mean the length, right? In secondary growth, the primary xylem grow towards the center, right? So secondary xylem push the sec primary xylem to the the center. There's a name for it. It's called the pith. You refer to your textbook, ah, pith, p i t h. So don't say center, okay? Ah, the phloem, the secondary phloem push the primary phloem. To the cortex, not push outside, push to the cortex. The xylem is pushed towards the piece of the cell of the stem. Okay, a menstrual cycle is very common one. Your uterine membrane collapse during a menstruation. Wrong. Okay, during is not collapse. Ah, disintegrate. Okay, the urai. Yeah, in Bahasa is the urai. But don't write Google. Ah. Don't like loro, the urai. Crossing over, ah, this is very common one. Crossing over occur during process one of meiosis. Then what happened during process one? Crossing over occur. Full stop. No marks. You have to mention who cross over. Okay, crossing over between the homologous chromosome. Okay, antara chromosome homolog. Pindah silang antara chromosome homolog. Okay. And then when you draw telophase, don't draw one two cell. It is still one cell because it un hasn't undergo cytokinesis. Okay, mm -hmm. only that there are two nuclei. So when you draw telophase, it is one cell with two nuclei. Okay, dalam masa melukis telophase satu cell masih satu cell, tapi ada dua nukleus. Right, so don't draw two cells. Only after cytokinesis, you have two cells. Okay, fetal blood circulation. This is a very common mistake. Oxygenated blood from the mother is transported to the fetus through the umbilical vein. Can anybody tell me what is wrong here? Chat. Can you chat? Whoever can. Umbilical vein. Ah, what's wrong? Umbilical vein. Umbilical cord, no yet. No umbilical cord. Umbilical cord. You have umbilical vein, umbilical artery. Correct. Yes. There are two umbilical vein and artery. Umbilical artery in the umbilical cord. This is one mistake many students make during exam. Okay, I tell you ah, oxygenated blood cannot be used. Okay, because when you say oxygenated blood, you are implying the mother's blood go to the fetus. If you can remember, the maternal blood 
and the fetal blood system are separated. Right? The fetus and the mother's blood, they are there is a separation between maternal blood and fetal blood. Other system per, uh, per, per different uh, separation. Okay. And other per, uh, line, uh, line, system line di buna ana tidak ada campur kalau campur ada agus it can cause agglutination okay so there is a separate maternal blood system and fetal blood system so when i write oxygenated blood you are implying the mother's blood go to the fetus which is wrong okay the mother's blood reach the placenta and then it diffuse the oxygen diffuse and go to the umbilical vein go to the fetus so you have to say like this huh? oxygen Okay, oxygen from the mother. Okay, uh, oxygen and nutrient, not oxygenated blood. Okay, or you can say blood rich in oxygen and nutrient. Uh, that can be accepted, but not oxygenated blood. Okay, because there is a separation between mother and fetus. The blood do not mix. Clear, okay, student? Chapter 15.4. Okay, I have another eight more slides. Huh? Okay, when the arm is bent, the bicep contract, the tricep relax. Any idea what is wrong? Chat? When the arm is bent, the bicep contract, the tricep relax. It's the way how you present your answer. Okay? So you have to know cause and effect. You bend the arm first or your, your muscle contract first? Which one comes first? Of course, the muscle contract, right? So the bicep contract and the tricep relax causing the arm to bend. Okay. So the cause is the muscle contract. The effect is the arm bend, not the other way around. Clear? Okay. This is one common mistake. Okay. Booster. Artificial uh, active immunity. You need second dose, third dose. Why you do, do you need booster dose? Okay. So the booster dose is to increase antibody concentration. Reject. Okay. Reject. Why? Okay, if you remember your, your graph, okay, one of the important graph, do you notice there's a dotted line there? That dotted line, anybody knows the name of that dotted line? Okay. There are 200 of us participants here. What's the name of the dotted line? The Aras criminal good level of immunity. Okay, so you have to mention that level of immunity. Okay, so the second dose, Increase the antibody concentration above the level of immunity. Okay? Or in Malabahi, Aras Clear? Because the first dose also increases the antibody concentration. But the second dose extend it beyond the level of immunity. Okay? Malabahi, Aras Okay? Insulin convert glucose to glycogen. Reject. Okay? Insulin convert. Excess glucose, glucosa berlebihan. Not glucosa, huh? it must be glucosa berlebihan. Right? And last one up there, I think I stopped here. Atherosclerosis refer to narrowing of the blood vessel. Huh? So this one, um, apa salah? The wall. Okay? Uh, when you say wall, it can be outer wall. But this is the blood vessel, it's your blood vessel. The wall here. We have cholesterol, you have fats, that's why have fats. Outer wall is here. When you say wall, it can be outer wall, it can be inner wall. Okay? So the atherosclerosis is the inner wall. So you have to specify uh, the inner wall of the blood vessel. All right? So I think uh, that is almost, almost five already. All right? So I'm supposed to end at five. I actually have a few more slides. So I end over here. If you need other slides, maybe I can share. Uh, to your teachers, uh, your teacher can uh, um, request, I will send to your teachers. Okay, so I think that is all for the mistake, the, the mistake 
the common mistake uh, can, uh, done by the students in the previous years. Okay, so don't do this mistake uh, in uh, 2022 in your exam in March 2022. All right, so uh, I think that is all for uh, the technique, answering technique for paper two. Okay, by your paper two. All right, so okay, that is all. Over to, over to you, Dorothy. Very, a very much thank you for Mr. Lee for his wonderful time and fruitful sharing just now. I hope students today you have learned a lot on answering techniques to, un to score well for biology paper two. And I myself learned a lot as well. These are the things that I would also teach my A-level students as well when I prepare them for exams. All right. So um, thank you students for all the questions. Hopefully this will be helpful right, for your future references. So Mr. Lee, on behalf of SPM eBoost Revision Workshop, we would truly appreciate all your sharing during the session today. So as a token of appreciation, we would like to present you with the certificate of appreciation. May this be enough to show you how grateful we are that you are able to slot us in your busy schedule. Right? Okay, May thank you. May this be enough to... So um, sorry again for any miss for um, calling your name wrongly in the, in the beginning. <laughs> right? So let us, um, before we end our event today, Oh, so before we end our event today, students, please click the um, applause icon in the reaction option, right? So that we can show our, our appreciation to Mr. Lee for today's session, right? So you can see the reaction icon, right? You can click for applause, right? So um, before we end our event today, I would like to invite all of the guests, right? To switch on the camera for photography session. And ask, um, please switch on your camera for photography session. I will take a quick cam photo session. Right, Lina? Right, if you switch on your camera, right, give a big smile. Okay, coming right away. <laughs> there are too many, too many of you here, so I uh, only managed to take the photo, uh, the first page, yeah. Okay. Hi, I saw Francis again, uh, Giuliano, Russell. Hello. Okay, and one. Then... Oh, sorry. Okay, yes, we are good. Okay, so students, before you leave, Please scan, um, you can see on the screen there's a QR code, right? Please scan the QR code in case if you want to get the e certificate for today's attendance. Right? So, um, thank you for your cooperation. So, now the. All the best to all the students, now. all the best to all the candidates. So, the workshop has come to its end. So, if you have any inquiries about the um, other workshops, you can scan the QR code shown, right, or kindly contact Miss Lina, Madam Lina, Michelle, or Tegu Law through the phone yeah. number shown on the screen. But once again, thank you everyone for being, gracing us with your presence today. We really, truly really appreciate it. Again, Mr. Lee, right, thank you for um, for today's session. So on behalf of the organizing community, I would like to again apologize if you have done any mistakes throughout the event. And um, just again, a reminder, if you want to reach and um, rewatch today's workshop, you can go to our YouTube channel to rewatch the whole workshop again in case you missed some part of the workshop, right? Or you did not screenshot some of the slides that Mr. Lee has shared. Okay. So lastly, we hope to see you soon in the next workshop for tomorrow, right? For English Paper 1 at 2.30 again via Zoom here as well. Okay. All right. So I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have okay. a week. You have a nice All the best in your exam. Bye-bye. Huh? Good luck for your SPM students. Bye. Francis, <laughs> <laughs>